See? There's only two things that human beings are ever saying. Please and thank you. That's all human beings are ever saying. The only thing is, jackal-speaking people have learned to say please in a suicidal way. Think about that for a moment. What else is, are human beings ever saying except, please, uh, you're behaving in a way that isn't meeting my needs, or my needs are not getting met by something else. Would you please do this to meet my needs? That's, we need to know how to say that well to survive in the world. When our needs are not getting met, we need to know how to say please in a way that makes it enjoyable for people to give it to us. All right, this morning we learned how to do that. Just learn how to say what you are feeling and needing and make a clear request. Make sure that no words come out of your mouth that imply wrongness on the part of other people. Do everything you can to promote in people the trust that when you make a request, it is a request and not a demand. And that increases the likelihood that people will enjoy giving to you. So we, we studied that this morning. Now, the other half of the process is how to receive from other people what's alive in them and what they are needing to make life wonderful and how to receive that without hearing any criticism or demand. Just to hear what's alive in them. And we need to learn how to do this even when these other people are saying please in this strange way that we've been educated to say please. You know, you were all speaking perfect giraffe for about a year. See, so what I'm teaching you now is really not a second language, it's really your first language. I'm bringing you back to life, to, to nature, to your first language. So now the other half. How do we respond to a jackal's please? when a jackal is expressing the please this way. The problem with you is, is that you are too... See, that's please. That person's in pain. That person has a need that isn't getting met. And isn't it sad that they only know that way to ask for it? Isn't that tragic for this person? To be saying please in a way that almost guarantees you're not going to get what you want. Or if you do, it's going to be motivated by fear, guilt, or shame, and you're going to pay for it. How sad to be educated that way. And now, of course, it would be even sadder if when the person says please that way, you don't hear the please. You hear a criticism. And that's when we have war. Somebody in pain does their best to express it. Person on the other end hears a criticism. So let me tell you what the person that you were working on this morning, all of the messages that I heard you relate, that what you predict they might say back, here is what I heard the person saying. I heard the person you're speaking with saying this back to you. I'm in pain. I have a need that isn't getting met. Okay? That's what the person was saying in the message that you wrote down. I'm in pain because a need of mine isn't getting met. Now hear that. Put on giraffe ears and say this back to the person. Are you feeling? And guess what that person is feeling when they say what they did because you are needing. And guess what their need is. So I'm asking you to go back to the message that you predicted you might get back. I'm wanting you to imagine the person actually says this to you. And now if you have giraffe ears on, here will be your reaction. Are you feeling? Guess their feeling. Because you are needing. Guess their need. With giraffe ears, all you can hear are feelings and needs. You can hear no criticism. A number of years ago, I was working with a group of women in religious life. 
and they had a conflict for some 15 months that was creating great pain within their community. And they asked me to help them resolve this. And uh, I suggested that we begin by having everybody express their needs. What needs of yours are not getting met in this situation? And after the first speaker's second word, I could see why, after 15 months, not only had they not been able to resolve the issue, but why it was causing increasing pain. Can anybody guess what the second word was? But what was the second word? First word was I. I think. Yes. That's as soon as I heard the second word, I could see why it was. Notice my question of them was what needs of yours are not getting met? And instead of an answer, I got I think. Immediately I knew trouble. And here's what the rest of the message said I think that if we are to be in religious life, we must take our commitment seriously and dress as though in a dress in an appropriate way. See, I asked for a need. That's what I got back. And then another religious sister said, Sister, I agree, but I think... <laughs> See, 15 months. What was the issue? The issue was whether to wear traditional clothing or not. You see, this was the issue. Fifteen months had not been able to resolve it. In fact, at great pain in that fifteen months, the community was divided. But I asked, what are you needing? And I got thoughts. Thoughts. You see. So it took me a while to teach them never to hear the thoughts. Do not hear thoughts. Only use the thoughts as a window. Look through the thoughts to the needs that are behind. Hear the needs behind. It'll be a whole different world. Don't, don't hear thoughts. They finally got it. They finally started to look through the words, the thoughts, to what was behind. And then it's amazing how, in a short time, we resolved the conflict. My partner, Ruth Bebermeyer, was with me at the time and saw this miracle that comes whenever we hear through the words to what's behind them. I feel so sentenced by your words. I feel so judged and sent away. Before I go, I'd like to know Is that what you meant to say? Before I rise to my defense Before I speak in hurt or fear Before I build that wall of words Tell me, did I really hear? Words are windows or their walls. They sentence us or set us free. When I speak and when I hear, let the love light shine through me. There are things I need to say Things that mean so much to me If my words don't make me clear Will you help me to be free? If I seem to put you down If you felt I didn't care Try to listen through my words 
to the feelings that we share. Words are windows or they're walls. They sentence us or set us free. When I speak and when I hear, let the love light shine through me.